With the new Mobile Ads SDK, it's now possible to incorporate ads in a lot of different ways. We're going to take a look at how we can implement a inline ad, which just means that the ad will be incorporated into our app. So when you scroll, for example, in a list, you will be able to see that ad every five items or so. To get up and ready, I recommend the documentation where you can show how you can set up Android and iOS side, but that should be very straightforward. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. You'll find a full write-up over at robertbrunhager.com. And of course, don't forget to smash the like button. So let's get into it. First off, we're just going to take a quick look at what we actually have been working with. So of course, we have the material app, which returns the home page, in this case being a list page. And we just generate a list of countries, in this case 50 countries, and all of them are Sweden. And if we take a look at the list page, we can see that it's just a basic page where we have a list view builder and we have the list of the countries that we pass in. And I'm just using a card with the list tiles. Here we can see how that would look without having any ads. So of course, now that you have seen that, we're going to move over to the PubSpec YAML and we can start off by adding the package. Now for managing the state, we're going to use Flutter Riverpod. And of course, to make ads possible, we have to have the Google Mobile Ads package. So as both of these packages support null safety, we're going to implement them fully with null safety supported. Now, this video is inspired from the official video from the Flutter team. So we're going to do a very similar implementation. We're going to add a new class. In this case, we're going to call the class add state. And first off, we're going to create a property, which is going to be a future of type initialization status. This is something that will be returned when we initialize the Google Ads SDK. And we will see this later, but we'll just declare it for now. As we're just declaring it here, we're going to add it as a parameter for the constructor. After we have that, we're going to define a getter for the iOS and Android banner add unit ID. These are IDs that you can get over at AdMob website, but we're just using testing IDs in this case, which will make it a bit more easier for us now to demonstrate. We're also going to define a listener. So the reason for are using this listener, so we can use print out every kind of status that we will have for this banner ad. And with this, we're just going to define things out of the box, such as when the ad is loaded, we're just going to print that the ad is loaded. And the same for when the ad is actually failed to load, we're going to dispose the ad as well as printing that out as well. And the other ones we use print just to make it a bit more clear. But in here you can add more prints or handle different cases if you want to. Now, as we're using Riverpod, we're going to wrap our My App with a provider scope. That just means that all of the provider state that we're going to have is going to be contained in that one. Now, before we do any actual call, we're going to start off in the main method. And we're going to call ensure initialized for the widgets flutter binding. And this is to make sure that we have the binding set up so the package can actually do the platform defined code. So now we have everything set up to call the methods from the Google mobile ads package. So if we start writing mobile ads, you can import the package and we can get the instance of that and then calling initialize. Now this method returns a future. So if we just hover over the initialize, we can see that it returns a future of initialization status. And for this, we're just going to define a variable, which is going to contain this ads initialization. See so if you remember before, we actually defined this in the add state class. So let's create a new instance of that class. Let's call it add state. And we're just going to define a new add state object. This one requires us to pass the initialization. So we're going to pass the ads initialization variable we just created. So now we're going to create a provider to provide this add state throughout the entire application. Of course, there are a bunch of different ways on how you can do this. I'm just going to define a add state provider, and this provider is going to be defined as a scoped provider. The type for this scoped provider is going to be add state. And now for the return, as we don't actually have a value for when we actually create this provider, and in this case, we're going to throw a unimplemented error. 
So now you use a small hack, there is an easier way to do this. So if you hover over the scope provider, you can see that there is another way to implement the same kind of logic. And that is used by implementing or adding null in the constructor for the scope provider. And this is outlined in the scope provider with no default behavior section of the documentation. You can see that this is equivalent to just throwing a unsupported error. So now let's override that behavior. So at the run app, we have the provider scope and inside there we can define the overrides. So we define the add state provider and then dot override with value. And then for the value, we're just going to pass the add state. And that is all we have to do to provide this value throughout the application. Now in the list page, we actually want it to be possible to add ads inside this list. So currently this list only contains 50 countries, but we want it to be able to also contain ads. So we're going to define a late list of objects. And we're going to give it a very descriptive name, such as countries with ads. Now we can define the init state where we are going to initialize these countries with ads. We're going to do that below the super call. And for now, we pretty much want this list to be a copy of the last list. So we'll use equals to list.from and then we can provide our widget.countries. So currently both of these lists are identical. So countries with ads are the same as widget.countries. So now what we actually want to do is add ads to this list. So we can go ahead and override the did change dependencies. This just makes sure that every time something new is added to the list with countries, that this method will be called. So first off, we can get the value, which is going to be the add state coming from the provider we created before. Now on this add state, we have still this variable, the initialization variable that we created, which in this case is a future that we initialized at the beginning of the app. So let's write add state dot initialization and then we can call it then method. This then call just makes sure that we are going to get this callback when the initialization is actually done. You may also want to catch in case of an error, but we're not going to focus really on that. So inside this callback, we're going to call a method that we're going to create soon, which is going to be called insert adds to countries list. And we're just going to pass the add state that we got from this one. So let's go ahead and define the method. Now inside this method, we're going to call set state to just make sure that the state of this list that we have will be updated. Now our goal here is to add banner ads between every five items or so in our list. Just make sure that you're actually looping backwards in this list. That way we can ignore and not get any kind of index out of bound exception. We're going to start the list five items before the end of the list. And we're going to continue as long as i is more than one. Now we can decide for how many items we actually want to jump for having the spaces between for the ads. And we want in this case to use jump 10 items. But of course here you can add your different amounts. So you can have 50 or five or 20, it's up to you. So here we can take the counters with ads and we're going to insert an item. The index is going to be the index coming from the loop that we just did. And the element is going to be the add that we're going to create. So thanks to the package, we have a object or a widget that we can create called a banner add. The constructor takes in four arguments. The first one being the size, which we can get with the add size dot banner. And of course there are a bunch of different sizes in this add size object. For the add unit ID, we're going to access that from the add state and we can call our getter banner add unit ID. For the listener, we're just going to do the same. We're going to take the listener coming from the add state. And now for the last part, which is going to be the request. So let's just create a add request. And in this one, you would add all of your tags and metadata for the ads to be more personalized. That could be things like keywords, etc. After that, we're just going to make sure that the load method is called. That just means that the ad will be loaded. Now all that is left is actually showing either the country or the ad. So first off, we're going to just replace all of the places that we use the widget.countries and instead use our countries with ads. 
and instead of the variable name country, we're just going to have item, which is a bit more generic. Let's replace that in the places that we actually use it as well. And now we can go ahead and add a if case for checking if it's either a country or a add. To do that, it's rather simple. So you start by writing a if case and we can take the item that we defined use the line above it and we can check if it's a country. If it is a country, we're going to wrap the return with the card to that country. After we have gone ahead and moved that code, we actually also have to have the else case. And in this case, the else case will just signalize that that item is not a country, but actually a add. So we're going to define a new container widget. This container widget is going to have a height and we're just going to set that to 50. For the child, we're going to use a widget called add widget coming from the package as well. This one requires a add and we get that with item, but we just have to cast it as a banner add. Or else it can't really determine if the item is the correct type. Now the last part here is just going to define the item count, which is going to be the count with adds, as that will now contain more items. Now looking at the actual application, we can see that it's loaded and we have a list of items, in this case countries, and every 10 items we're going to have a banner ad displayed in line. Hopefully you learned something, and if you want to find the full write-up, you can find that at robertbrunager.com. And if you want to support me, make sure to check out Patreon, I will link that also down in the description. Luckily, I also have a bunch of other videos that you can check out, which comes up on the screen right now. So click one of them, enjoy, and I will see you in the next one.